All right, guys, so we're going to do a reliability video today on the 2000, 2000 to 2007 Toyota Sequoia. And even though I did a similar video a long time ago, about a year ago, a lot of you guys still ask me about it. So I'll go ahead and do the video on it. So this is probably one of the more reliable SUVs, or if you have the truck, the Tundra trucks, you could possibly get. This thing has 405,000 miles on it right now and with minimal issues. Now, I think the only real issues we had was the alternator went bad. We're on the second alternator. And we found that pretty much true through the years of having these. About every 200,000 miles, you're gonna need an alternator. Just the way it is. Um, other than that, everything else was probably lift related, lift kit related. You know, you chew through your, your ball joints and tie rods. Uh, if it's not lifted, we had some of these get 250,000 miles and never had an issue. And yeah, I mean, really no oil leaks. This thing does go in between oil changes without adding any oil or any coolant. Uh, right before I got it, somebody did replace the radiator. And I guess it was dripping, but who really knows? And here it is all in its dusty glory. Um, I would say you get a little bit of valve cover seeping. At this mileage, it probably never been done. Overall, it's pretty mild. Uh, I think around 200,000 miles also, the battery cables kind of deteriorate, so we replace those, the ends, not the cables themselves. Um, if you have the Sequoia with the front fan on it, usually those go bad. We replace those with the aftermarket for about 20 bucks. Uh, some of these have a fan on each side in the front. You just don't know. I don't know what the exact model is that has or don't have those some tundras have it some of them don't uh, we replace the air filter box with this a cleanable filter you could do a panel in the factory box too uh, driven it so much that you get tired of buying air filters for it and then almost every one of these almost every Toyota in general has issues with the power steering seeping this one never does drip it just seeps as it comes out of there and of course it is spark plugs I tried to do spark plugs about every 50,000 miles in these. Uh, these don't really have any issues with the hose rotting. Like all the hoses still feel good at this mileage and this age, which is pretty impressive. I would say cosmetic wise, we replaced the headlamps. They were super cheap, 25 bucks a piece. Got those off eBay. Uh, there's a couple different sizes, depends on what year you have. They get all foggy. Uh, you could clean them, but eventually they get little check marks in them to where it deflects the light. And on this one, we did put the LED headlight bulbs in it. And then these corner markers get a little bit checked. Usually they don't have any issue with fogging though. Um, overall, the paint, I think they had a couple issues with the green ones, with the dark green ones fading out. But as a rule of thumb, as long as you take care of them, usually they don't do very bad. As far as front and rear diff, these usually don't have any problem with that. The transmission, if you keep the fluid changed, Every 50, 60,000 miles, the transmission will literally never go out. Uh, people tell me around 500, 550,000, eventually the transmission will go out. Um, just some general fatigue. CV axles in the front, if you don't lift it, they last for a long time. Just like any other car though, you see me on the BMW channel, you have to replace them with the legitimate CV axle. You cannot use the Chinese ones. They will not work. Um, probably the worst issue with the Sequoia the same as the Tundra is the rear wheel bearings. You get around 200,000 miles, they can go out. Depends on what you've been doing with it pretty much or how you've been treating it. The Sequoia ones are a little more difficult. Um, I have a press tool made so I could easily do it. If not, you have to take it to the dealer and have them press it out. It takes a special tool to press that out. Uh, as far as rust wise, not all depends on where you live at. This one has a little bit of rust right here. You can see the dirt. The dirt collects inside the door pretty easily, and that's what's rusted that out. Um, you see a few of them have a little rust in the bottom of the back door. That's not real common, though. I would say uh, cosmetically and functioning for the back door is probably one of the, the worst issues on these. And they have a lot of issue with the handle braking, with the latch braking, and the lock freezing up, and then the back window rolls down. If you don't keep that grease, it'll get water in there and rust that track out also. Now, some of you guys had issues with frame rust on the Sequoias. That's not a common problem. Uh, on the Tundras, Tundras prior to 03, they had issue with that. 
this OT Sequoia has no frame rust problems. Um, you know, if you live up north, that might be an issue. I really don't know, but that's not a not a real common problem whatsoever. They pretty much have no issues at all with the outside door handles breaking. Very, very, very little issues with the inside door handles breaking and no issues with the window, window regulators on the front four doors at all. It's only on the rear. There's no issue with the seat functions. Uh, the motors don't go bad in those. If you have leather seats and you don't treat them correctly, they could rip or if you kneel in them with your knee, it'll rip them. And it's a very simple dash. Nothing, nothing real fancy, just kind of the bare minimum. Um, you are gonna have some issues eventually with the brake rotors. It is a very heavy vehicle. And if you hit the brakes really hard, it could warp the rotors. Once you go to aftermarket stuff though, you get better stuff that doesn't do that. And we're getting towards the end here. I guess check engine light wise. The only problems you ever have is oxygen sensors. To get up north of 200,000 miles, you get a bad one here and there. Uh, it's just anything though. You replace it with a decent one and you're good. Uh, if you don't clean the throttle body sometimes, at least once every 100,000 miles, it'll throw check engine light for that. It's easy to take apart and clean all that out. It gets carbon built up in it. You lubricate the gears in a little gearbox there. This is all drive by wire on this. If you have the older Tundra with uh, drive by cable, it's not near as big a deal on that. Uh, timing belt on these, you know, this thing hasn't been changed over 200,000 miles. They're not known to have an issue. Um, if you do replace the timing belt in these, make sure you use OEM or something comparable. Definitely an OEM. Uh, the ice and water pump needs to go back in it. Make sure you don't have any issues. You put Chinese stuff in it, just like everything else. You're gonna have Chinese part for liability and nobody really wants that. Um, as far as oil leaks, I don't think we really have any oil leaks, just seepage on the valve covers. A little bit of seepage out of the rear main, uh, but it never, never drifts enough to actually hit the ground. And make sure and keep the skid plates off of these so if there ever is any kind of coolant leak or anything you can catch it uh, early on and it's not a horrible issue and then getting down to the end here the mirrors if they get a whole bunch of miles on it eventually you have to tighten the screw up in the bottom of the mirror we did this one we do that most of these that we get in and then it's not uncommon to see on the rails up here a little bit of that peeling off that's easy enough to fix with paint though and then of course the sunroof Never has any issues at all, uh, as far as any of that goes. Check engine light wise, I would say, I would say trash control wise, you can, get, you can even see that. The track lights on at the very top there. And there is a steering angle sensor that goes bad in here. If you have traction control, if you have a Sequoia, I don't think any of the Tundras have that. It's only the Sequoia or Limited Tundras possibly. That sensor is very expensive, hence why my salon is about 500 bucks and it is different from year to year. That's easy to calibrate. You don't really need too much of any special tools or special scanners or anything. It's set up so the OBD2 port, you can't jumper things to set, to reset stuff. If you don't have a scanner that does ABS and SRS, I can't really say enough anything else bad about it. I mean, it's been a very reliable vehicle. We get in, we pull the trailer with it. This thing's had the trailer pulled, the car hauler pulled more with it than driven empty. And, you know, it's super reliable. Am I gonna change it out? Yeah, I think so. I think I'm gonna change it out before I get some more miles on it. It's still a good vehicle. It'll still make somebody a good vehicle. At the price point these are right now, they're a very good deal. You can find a 01, 02 Sequoia for, you know, two to three grand. A uh, low mileage example could be as high as six or seven grand. And then, of course, the higher horsepower and five speed model in 2005 and up. Um, you'll get a little more for those. You'll get five to ten for one of those. Depends on the mileage, depends on the model and all that kind of stuff. But that's going to be it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope this helps you out. If you're looking to buy one of these vehicles, that's it. See you later.